Welcome to another episode of Good Morning Soul. Are you guys having a good morning? I hope you are. Today I'm going to be picking up where we left off on the collecting uh, video. Basically at the end, if you haven't watched that video yet, uh, basically in short, I was really into collecting like a bunch of movies, a bunch of video games, all of these things and all of it like was it was a huge passion for my life right so this is going to be like a four four part series probably uh and in this episode i specifically it's probably going to be five actually because the first one was the intro uh but in this episode i specifically want to talk about like what i was doing and like when did it become a problem uh so I, I was talking before how I had this weird obsession and how I really wanted to play all the games and watch all the movies and read all the books and all of these things. And back then, you know, there was no internet for me. I only was able to experience these things firsthand. And you know, there's something kind of beautiful in that. Like if you wanted to watch a movie, you had to get the movie. Like, you had to physically obtain whatever you wanted to experience. And, you know, if you wanted, like, a deluxe version of that, it was possible. There's steel books, stuff like that. And, um, I also, like, collected, like, Dragon Ball Z DVDs, and I collected all these things. And eventually, this led me to go to, like, thrift stores pawn shops, garage sales. This is where I bought most of this bullshit. Like I would go to, like yard sailing with my mom or whatever. And she, a lot of uh, how she made money back then was like transforming junk into artwork. If you've ever been to like art shows, like you'll see like antiques and they've been like spruced up and made into like these bigger things, right? So like, her going to yard sales made sense and usually people would have like their old video games and movies laid out and I would like I remember my heart just skipping a beat whenever I saw that and I would just rummage through whatever I wanted and you know for like five bucks I'd be walking out with like a shitload of movies or whatever and you know going out of business sales at like movie stores in towns that we've never been to that was a thing I remember getting a lot of stuff off of eBay. The second I learned about eBay, it was off. I was like, oh my God, I can buy like all these things, right? And I remember, um, I'll talk about this probably in a future episode. Uh, I remember after my first job, I bought a bunch of shit off of eBay. And there, there was a point where I was becoming a hoarder. I was straight up kind of becoming a hoarder. In my mind, I was like, I was gonna watch all the movies. I was gonna do all these things. And in order to watch those movies, I need to get those movies. So I remember one time on the side of the road, there was literally like a bunch of shit people were throwing away. And I remember like I was walking by back then because there's nothing to do back then. You would just go a walk up to McDonald's or something. And I remember like someone just had like a pile of VHS tapes and movies and shit like that. Old books that no one's ever gonna read again. And I was like, okay, I need to start hauling all of this stuff back to my house immediately. And I remember a lot of those VHS tapes I never watched. And a lot of them were just complete trash. I'm sure no one's gonna ever watch most of those. But in my mind, physical media like that, like, I was like, this needs a home. Like, and I still believe that. Like, collections exist so these things can, like... Like, in my mind, the world was gonna burn in a hundred years. And, like, I'm obviously joking. But, like, in my mind, eventually, like, the world's gonna end and all this art has to be reserved. And only collectors like myself are going to keep that alive. And eventually, like... The idea that, like, art could no longer exist, like, literally frightened me. Like, those video games that have, like, that are only online games and you can't even play them after the servers die, that would, like, 
upset me. That would actually like upset me to my like core. Like I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna be able to play that game. Like how am I gonna play all the video games in the world if like after a couple years you can't even play them? And you know, stuff like that. Like the idea that books could go out of print and eventually no one would be able to read those books. That terrified me. And you know, I still have that feeling but I don't like feel nearly as passionate as I did back then about it. But the main stuff I collected were like movies and video games. And I watched so many movies back then. Like I would rewatch the same movies all the time. And I would replay the same games all the time. Mostly because even though, you know, I, ha I was starting to get a good amount of movies, I did watch most of my movies back then. I watched like 85% of them. Whereas now, like, the movies I still have, like, I, I, like, have seen, like, maybe half of them, right? And, you know, nowadays when I experience art, it's like, I don't know, it's like looking through uh, an art house and just picking one picture at a time. Like, it's being, th I'm being surrounded with media nowadays, and I, it's just like, it's more like a buffet table. It's this endless buffet table, and I'm going one at a time. Whereas back then, I was a hunter. I was like hunting for a meal. And I've, oh, I've had this meal before, but there's no, there's nothing else to eat. So I'm going to keep eating this. Oh, there's a new animal I've never seen before. Let's take it out and eat it. And let's talk about and analyze how fucking tasty it was. Whether, it, like, whether other people thought it was tasty. But, you know, it's movies and not animals. I, I took that in a weird direction, but I think you get the idea. But this was something I was really passionate about. And back then, you know, going into like a blockbuster was like a kid in a candy store for me. And this is how I was obtaining most of this stuff. And a lot of these things, like going to a thrift store just to buy movies, if I'm doing that nowadays, it's probably to like buy it and flip it on eBay. Because that was one, out of, out of the collecting thing, that was like the one like thing, like financially I gained out of it. Like I learned how to flip shit on eBay. And the only thing I really know how to flip like well is like games and stuff like that. And, and occasionally, like, I'll go to a thrift store and I'll see, like, a comic book. I'll look how much it is on eBay. And it's like, oh, that's, like, $40. And I'll buy it for 50 cents. That's always a cool experience. I still, like, get a high out of that. But that's, like, a financial high. The high of, like, tracking down a physical piece of media. Experiencing that media. And then, like, putting it up on this, like, victory shelf. That's kind of dead to me. And I think that was kind of like a core of what collecting was back then to me. So that's kind of sad, but that, that it's the way it is. But um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for part two. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about like how much of a bitch storage was. Because that's how, that's, that's like the real struggle, the storage. So if you're interested in hearing about the struggle... The specific hell I went through back then, then watch the next part in the series. But until then, I'll see you guys later. I hope you have a good rest of your day. And uh, with that, I leave you.